Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. Before we get started today, I have an announcement to make. Thanks to several, or rather many suggestions from all of you and your outpouring of love, I have set up a Discord server, and I am opening it to the public. This is pretty exciting and a big step for me, and I know some of you are pretty excited to check it out, and I would be happy to have any and all of you join the Discord server. Its name is Gaming with Corazar. I think you'll recognize the logo on it. And I have put the invite link in the description. Please note, I am still tinkering with it, and I have an auto moderator that I'm not familiar with running parts of the show. So there may be some hiccups at first, but I am sure we will iron those out in short order. So hit that link, join up, and come chat, hang out, have fun, stream games, do whatever. I'll be happy to see you there. We are back in the world after one last reading, and honestly only the third reading, I think, of lore up on the ridge over there. If you missed last episode and you like the game's lore, make sure you check it out. Anyway, I have spent the last two days just kind of messing around here at the base, looking at things, packing a few things away, noting what things are going to spoil or rot or otherwise go away, mostly food. I've also found a couple extra bears that were lurking around, and took care of them. They spawned, at least one of them spawned over in the woods, and the second one I think spawned maybe closer. But they were trying to get, well the one of them was trying to get into the animals here, just like that first black bear. Also, I was a bit of a dummy. I had a temporal storm come up, and I went into our little hidey hole, and sat down and went to do some chores, figuring, hey, I'll just skip out on it. But I completely forgot that there are actually new visuals along with the Temporal Storms, so we missed that, and I'm sorry I didn't catch that on camera. However, next time we have a Temporal Storm, we'll get to see the new visuals. Anyway, it is time for us to start packing up to leave, because we have two barrels full of cured red meat, good for 12.6 years in the barrel, and for 3.2 years out of the barrel. So we are good on meat for the road. There are really only a couple things left to do. We need to go and harvest the cabbages, and then we need to go and make friends with one last pig to make a fresh meal to fill our bowl and stew pot with before we leave. So let's go ahead and harvest all of these, and I did get confirmation from the developers that the enormous amount of onions we got two episodes ago is actually intentional. Apparently most of the temperate crops got a big boost in productivity because apparently some of that was already done for the southern crops and the temperate crops kind of just lagged behind. At the same time, and we missed this too because of our upgrade, the growth times have also been doubled. So we planted those onions in I think 1.16.5, which is why it took a really weird amount of time. It was like 8 or 10 days to grow. They should have taken 16.6 .6 days to grow, at least at 100% growth speed. But that's good to know. Now we know, and now we can plan for it. I am really interested to see how this change affects the early game, because that's kind of when you're least able to handle having long growth times. So I think what we'll do is, once we actually get to the south and once we get settled in, I want to plant some crops right away and sort of start over completely from scratch, at least crop-wise, and see just how viable it is to actually survive on that kind of growth time. Anyway, as I swing this scythe in your face, I am going to make us a full six-course meal and an extra bowl to go with us, and then we are going to get out of here. All right, there we go. That is going to be our soup pot, and we'll leave this one here to replace that one. And let's go and get our gear sorted. 
because we have a few changes to make. We have this chest to wear on our backs, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. Once again, I'm bringing a full stack of lanterns, a meteoric iron anvil, six metal spikes, a full stack of terra preta, a full stack of linen. I'm bringing along nine temporal gears, and I think one of them I want to keep in our inventory after all, so I think we might need that along the way. And what else can I put into here? We won't need the hammer on the way. That should sort that. I am bringing metal parts for repairing any translocators, and I am bringing a full 64 steel ingots so that we can work new tools from them and repair our heavy armor while we're down south without having to go through all of the rigmarole of getting into steel working again. These two chests represent our inventory. Along the bottom, starting from the left, we have the steel falcs, the blackguard shield, brand new recurved bow, pickaxe, our steel armor, some honey sulfur poultices, and then we have our bowl with meal, and we have our stack of medium fertility soil. So I'm going to get all of these in our inventory, and we'll be off. Oh, and before we do, I forgot, I did find... Actually, I bought this lackey shirt a little while ago, and it doesn't quite give me that splash of yellow I'm looking for. It does give us some kind of off-white sleeves, so I think I might keep it on. Spin this way, would you? There we go. And you do get a little tiny bit of yellow right at the bottom of the shirt there. So, I guess it works. And if we ever get tired of the blue, we can blind ourselves. Okay, let's be off. So I am going to head up to the translocator to the north, and we're going to zip through there to the seven or 7,500 block south mark, and from there we will go through the neighboring translocator to the 12,000 block south mark. And that is where I will pick up with you all, and we'll begin our journey. I will probably sleep because I'm going to be getting up to the north one right around evening. And so we're going to sleep, and we will start on our southern journey at the beginning of tomorrow. Well, we're starting it today, but we'll begin the longer walk part of it tomorrow. In-game, not not next episode. This, this episode, yes. And here we are. I think we need to dig our way out, don't we? Yes, we do. Flex twine. Let's go ahead and get on that, and we'll get out of here. And there it is, folks. There is the way out. See if we can get some ladders in here. Ah, breathe that fresh air. I'm gonna dump all of these stones and sand and junk back where it came from. I did pick up some tin on the way up. There is some more down there, but I figured it's not vital, so if we have to drop it, we can. And let's take a look at where we are. Or not, I guess. Are we in a sandstorm? I think we're in the middle of a sandstorm. We're in a desert, there's a giant tree over there, but the wind's blowing like crazy and we can't see a thing. And I'll bet that if we empty our hands, we will be doing the covering face emote, or position animation. Okay, I want to check out this supposed guy over here after I put a really small stack of blocks up. I want to check out this trader and see what he has for sale. And then we want to get out of here because this is a decently unstable place. Not just the temporal, but also on the ground standpoint, considering I just fell through with some sand. Hello, Miguel. Building materials, okay. I have nothing you want and you have nothing that I want. Well, you know what, I'm gonna just hang out in here. And look at the map. So it looks like if we just go off in this direction a bit, we can head south through some water. 
and we'll probably get better visibility there. And this water probably isn't as navigable. This looks kind of flat down here. So, let's go southwest. Hey, fishies. Huh? And a seashell. Oh, I, I gotta stop myself. I gotta stop myself. No seashells. Here we go. We're getting out of the sandstorm. I spy green pastures. That's more like it. And where we are, it's not too terribly hot. Of course, we're kind of at a bit of an elevation. But back home, it was something like 20... couple degrees, 25 degrees. And here, it's actually quite chilly. At least for a June day in the south. Let's get rolling. As we travel, it occurs to me that some of you might be confused why we didn't have a big farewell and look back at Lupine Ridge. And the reason for that is I kind of felt like last episode was that long farewell. And I had just spent a whole bunch of time messing around, primping. I even cut down and replaced a whole bunch of dead fruit saplings. So we'll have trees that we won't see for a very long time, and maybe some of them will grow. But I had just sort of found myself focusing on all the small details too much, and I didn't want that to get in the way of us heading out. So if you missed a goodbye and you want a long goodbye to Lupine Ridge, I do recommend you check out the previous episode. It's kind of short, short and sweet, but I think it conveys our love of Lupine Ridge and our desire to see it once again in the future. Now, at some point, we're going to start seeing some different crops cropping up. Hmm, get it? And we'll probably start seeing fewer berry bushes. Hey, Terra Preta. Hmm, you're out of the way. And I'm purposely keeping my inventory relatively open so that we can gather some of these crop seeds along the way and hopefully have something of a starter crop to work with once we get down there. That's going to be the main thing that I fill our inventory with, unless we come across something so magical that we just have to have it. And I just don't know what that is, if anything, would be that necessary for us. And one of the main reasons I'm keeping the heavy armor on our bar is that the bears... I haven't gotten hit by them yet, but I don't want to. And they hit so hard, I have seen them absolutely shred people in our normal armor we're wearing here. And I have little desire to end up having to hike this all over again. That's wild. And I think we're still going to be in regular, like, brown, black bear, maybe grizzly bear territory for a little while. So I need to be able to quickly switch to our heavy armor, and hence it is on the bar. What have we here? I think I know what this is. This, uh, I think this is limestone, not chalk, isn't it? Oh, no, it's granite. Wow, okay. Fooled me. While we are on our little jaunt here, little, I use hyperbolically, let's talk about what I want to find when we go to the south. In a previous video, and I'm not sure which one at the moment, I was wandering through some terrain and noted that it would be cool to build in some jungly cliffs. And that is exactly the kind of terrain I am looking for. I want some kind of interesting cliffs that I can really dig into. Oh, hey! Just a second. And I want to have a nice view of the jungle in and around us and really be able to just sort of live almost in the trees. But we are here at the moment and we have just stumbled across red top grass. This is a new kind of flower in the game as of 1.17. And it's neat. It's cute. I like it. Kind of pink. I don't think there are many pink flowers in the game right now. Mostly bright oranges and reds and blues and purples and such. So... That's a cute addition. 
I'm not going to take any because it's, you know, clutter for inventory. And we'll leave that there, and I'm sure we'll come across more in the future. So I would like to have some jungle cliffs to really sink my pickaxe into. And I really think that having trees all on the ground below us would be a really nice backdrop for everything. And I want to build sort of into the side of that mountain. Maybe even along some kind of ridge line. Not like Lupine Ridge on the top, but like dig into the side of it somewhere. That is what we are on the lookout for. Well, what we will be on the lookout for when we get farther south. And already we're starting to see some warmer temperatures. Check out, it is now 32 degrees Celsius which is, I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit. For those of you who are on my side of the pond and not in the north, we should soon, not soon, we should in the next few minutes here start seeing some different crops, some different trees, and I think that's just some load over there. I thought I saw something glimmering in the near distance that could be something new. Oh, nope, that's just wood. Okay, never mind. Along with the changes in crops that we see, and note that terra preta back there. For anyone who's wondering how to find terra preta, this is how you do it. Just keep wandering. Here's some more. But as we get more in different crops, we'll also see fewer and fewer berry bushes, unless they've changed something in the game. But the berry bushes are primarily a temperate to moderately northern resource. And I don't think we'll find many of them down south, although I think, and don't quote me on this, but sometimes I think on elevated areas, especially larger, like plateaus, sometimes those can sort of create a more temperate climate, and that can cause some berry bushes and things to spawn that you normally find. Kind of like how when we went much farther north and found a giant grove of larch trees, which we have found like three of down where we live, and I thought they were so rare, but apparently in the north they're not. There's a bear over there. I'm gonna leave him alone. Hopefully he'll ignore me too. Now something to keep in mind is that, or I should say something to bear in mind, is that as we get farther south we're not going to see fewer bears necessarily, but the type of bear will change. In the northern areas where we are, we are seeing the brown and black bears and maybe grizzlies. Hey, a new tree type. When we get far enough south, we'll start seeing, I believe, sun bears and panda bears. And so we'll have to look out for those. And while we will see fewer and fewer wolves until we get to none, we will start to see hyenas. And they like to spawn in areas just like this, where you see this short grass and desert. Hyenas love this kind of area, and they are very numerous. They spawn in large packs, but they're fairly cowardly. They will usually run away after a smack or two. And it looks like there's probably some bauxite around here. Let's take a look at this tree and something else I noticed off in the distance. Well, near distance. But this is a green spire cypress. Notably different from the sort of pale barked cypress trees that we have. And these are a southern type of tree. They unfortunately have a pretty low sapling drop rate, but I'll see if we can get one. Hey, there we go. We got one. Those are kind of rare. They're hard to propagate. There is a mod that will let us sort of make them a lot more feasible as far as farming them goes. And I might install it at some point. But right down here, we have our very first southern specific crop, the amaranth. This is a very vibrant red grain that we can plant. And these seeds otherwise behave like the other grains in the game, except that they have a somewhat higher heat resistance and they don't do well in cold. They're also pretty light on nutrient consumption, only requiring 15% nitrogen. But now that we're seeing these, we should expect to see more and more as we get farther and farther south. And yes, I'm going to come over here and trim this tree, too. I would like to use a couple of these for decoration. So, 
Hey! Proceed. Anyway, let's be off. We're gonna cross this desert and see what is on the other side. I do love these vistas. Look at that right over there. If we were in the deep, deep south, that was the mountain. I actually built on the RF Fury server on a mountain quite like that one. I don't know how broad its top is. It looks pretty flat on top from the map at least. But I have a large flat area on the RF Fury server pretty far south that's actually mostly temperate year-round. And so I have basically a growing season of yes. I can grow pretty much anything there year-round and I can just leave my crops in the ground all year. I'm seeing a lot more salmon now. I wonder if that first lake we swam in was just sort of a fluke. I'm going to stop and whenever we see these green spire cypress trees, I will grab as many saplings as I can because we're not going to come back this way except maybe once to go back to Lupine Ridge for one final time. Unless we can find some better, you know, path via translocators. Look at that. But since we're going to be coming back this way, hopefully never, then I don't mind just tearing these trees down and bringing all the seeds with us. I think we'll set down roots temporarily for the night. I'm not too keen on running through the night because while we are fairly well defended with our armor, if we die out here because of falling or other dangers, then we are going to have to make a very, very long trek back. And boy, do I want you. Hey, you know what? I think I will just chill here for the night, because that looks like pretty rough terrain, probably drifter full at night. So I will see you all in the morning. If I drop a couple lights here, and we will be off when the sun rises. And apparently, lupines like to grow on gravel in the water. And good morning. It is a very foggy day. It is time for us to take our things and continue on our merry quest. Farewell, beautiful purple seashell. There are so many things to look out for. I am probably missing so many different crops and things. You are probably screaming at the screen right now. Corazar, there's like new crops over there. The translocator, look, look. More Terra Preta. But I am focused primarily on surviving at this point. Ooh, thunderstorm. I hear there's a new threat with those now. Lightning bolts that can and will hit you. And can and will do damage, if not kill you. I have no idea how powerful those lightning strikes are. Now, in addition to finding a really nice jungle mountain cliff ridge thing, there are a couple other sort of usual suspects that we need to be on the lookout for. One, we do of course need to settle in a temporally stable location that is pretty much, you know, requirement numero uno. And so that is definitely something to consider. Hey, sunflowers! Look at that. Take some of these. Or not. So we do want to have the usual complement of stability. And apparently no sunflowers. Okay. Dare you deny me. Did I just see a lightning strike over in the distance? I think I did. And in addition to that, we want, of course, decent access to materials. I would kind of like to settle in a place with a darker stone color, like shale or basalt, maybe slate. Not a requirement, but it would be a nice to have. I think it would go well with the colors I have in mind, and I also think that it would, well, it would help us mine our materials more easily, because I do want to build some basalt. And I am going to take flax. We are going to need a lot more flax where we're going. But, like I said, I did want to try to start from scratch and not bring, you know, huge bins of seeds with us. Oh, some more amaranth. Oh, here we go. Here's what it looks like when it's fully grown, too. I did want to show you guys this. So here it is fully grown. Look how brilliant that is. 
I think it's actually brighter than it was in the last version when I last saw it. I remember it being kind of like a... It's still pretty, but like a dull red. Can we... go. Funny hitbox interaction there. A little shocked we're only seeing amaranth and not like soybeans and rice and stuff, but... I will certainly take it. Do spy carrots, which are kind of funny, although I think carrots are pretty decently heat resistant. Let's grab this tree. Well, it's seeds. And we'll get the sunflowers that are all around here. And something you'll notice that I never really covered is that different areas have different amounts of fertility. You can be in a super lush green field and not find a single growing wild crop. And then you can be in like a little arid place like this one with very little rain, uncommon, and you get this short stubby grass and you'll find crops galore because there is a separate overlay the game uses, a heat map, for determining what kinds, or rather mostly, the abundance of crops in an area. And I spot over here a new crop. Well, an old crop. We already have some of these at home. We found some seeds in a loot vessel, but these are natural soybeans. And we're going to pick up some of these guys too. So these are going to be very nice for getting some protein into our diet without having to cultivate animals. So this field is like a very nice place, it seems, to find crops because it seems that the fertility rate here is very high. I did see just over here, we have our second new kind of flower. Now this is not new in 1.17. But this is new to us because this only grows in the south. This is orange mallow. And this goes really nice in pots. It kind of acts like heather or I think kind of like catmint too sometimes in pots. And it is just really nice to have. Can you see that mountain right there? If we can find that kind of formation of mountain in a jungle biome, that would be perfect. Okay, let's push onward. I think I've had enough harvesting up here for now. Let's push through this walnut grove. Maybe we'll find a jungle on the other side. And we have another redwood forest ahead of us. Okay. It's not too bad. We're starting to get into the truly warm temperatures now. We have 38.6 on July 2nd. And look at how green it is. And I think I see a tropical fruit tree. Let's see what you are. I'm not sure I have the inventory space to carry you yellow apple? Really? This far south? You'll never vernalize. I'm wondering if we're going to need to go... Ooh, we're going to go this way. That would be a bear. Oh boy, still seeing black bears down here? Oof. No thanks. I am wondering just how much farther we're going to need to go. Because on the RF Fury server, I am at right about the 19,000 block south mark. And it's pretty tropical, like jungles and savannas everywhere, but we haven't seen a real savanna yet. In fact, we haven't even seen any of the tropical trees. I do hear more tropical bees. Well, there are just bees galore around here, aren't there? Well, it is getting pretty dark, so I think we need to hole up for the night here very shortly. You know, I think I will dig into the side of this here, and we'll drop our bed, and we will have a brief nap. Good morning, everyone. We are in a little hovel that makes me feel like we're back in the very, very early game. And I've been doing some poking around the map. We are at just shy of 20,000 blocks south of zero. Now. One thing I've noticed is that while we've hit a couple small savanna-like areas and a couple deserts, we haven't come across any jungles yet, and I haven't seen, aside from some orange mallow, any evidence of some of the more southerly plants. So I think, I think we need to keep going maybe another five kilometers south or so before we start seeing real tropical biomes and temperatures. And so I think we're going to pick up this this morning by doing exactly that. 
I basically want to go until we start seeing what I'm familiar with as being sort of the hallmarks of the south. We should be seeing sort of palm trees and we should be seeing uh, some poppy flowers and we should be seeing and we should be seeing probably more of the southerly crops and fewer things like carrots and so on. We've still seen a lot of carrots and even some turnips, which is kind of a surprise. So I'm going to dig out of here and probably kill a couple drifters in a moment. And we're going to get going. And I am probably going to have to drop, I'm going to guess, this tin and this flax at some point. Because if we do come across any other seeds, I have no more room for them. All right, let's roll. And let's just keep going south for a little while. And we will keep seeing temperate trees pretty much all the way until we stop seeing trees altogether. But we haven't seen any tropical trees yet. And that's what sort of is cluing me in on the fact that we're not quite far enough south to say we should start looking for a jungle. Something else that kind of serves as a hallmark of when you know you're really getting into the deep south is that you'll stop seeing these Cooper's reeds. And instead, you'll start seeing papyrus growing in sort of the same locations. So that's another indicator that you're in the right area for the kind of temperatures that we are looking to settle in. Because where we are now, since it's still a little bit farther north than I want to be, we're still going to get something resembling winter. It might not be a real winter in terms of temperate zones. It might only get to... Ooh. Thank you. That, that's enough. It might only get down into, say, the low teens or the single digits Celsius. And we want something a bit warmer than that. I want a place where it is reliably in double digits, preferably 20s or higher, all year round. Now, there are some more of those green cypress over there, but I want to try to get back on course more of a direct south route. So I'm going to actually go this way a bit and we'll continue south down here in this giant conglomerate sand desert. Oh, look at those mountains, though. If that was a jungle, I'd be all over it. But nope, instead we're in a sandstorm. Ah, finally. There we go. All right. The sea again. It's still very windy. Okay, we've emptied our soup pot for the first time. So when we stop to rest, we're going to cook another six meals in this. Now this right here... This is some cool terrain. I do think if this were jungle, I might take this as a potential settling spot. But it is more of a sort of arid grassland savanna kind of thing. Got an interesting river. Rivers in Vintage Story are quite rare because the game doesn't generate them as such. Due to the Perlin noise generation, you get these kind of streeted mountains that occasionally create valleys. And if you get really lucky, you might see a river like this. And it's very short, not really a river at all, honestly. But it's still a neat, different formation to see. Hey, a trader. Why don't we go and visit them? Just for grins and giggles. Of course, that means going into sandstorm territory. Oh well. Hello, Edel, my friend. No, don't put that on. Hello, Edel. You have blackguard gear and you want stuff. Don't really need you. But good to know you're here. See you never. You know, I think I have enough sunflower seeds. I'm going to just stop gathering them for now because we already have a lot of seeds of that, and I don't think we need to worry about getting a full stack. How are these mountains? We're going to go to the east of them, I think. Looks like it's a better way to go. Yeah, I think we'll cross the water here. Wow, look at that flat plain. I haven't really seen a lot of these in our wanderings, either back home or this far south. Oh, never mind, not a plain just water. I've been duped. Hey, hey, another trader. Could be a place to stay the night. Interesting with the clouds here. Look how sort of gray and sort of overshaded everything is. I guess overcast is the word. 
I don't think I've really seen this kind of lighting. I'm not sure if it's due to the new game version, because I know they changed some of the sort of global lighting shaders, or if this is sort of a southern thing. Because I do know that the sun's angle changes based on your latitude in the world. A low free bed, apparently. You know what? This is probably as good a place as any to take a break. We're going to drop our soup pot. Going to grab a piece of grass. And we're going to make a few more meals. So, there we go. And I'm going to babysit this a little bit. Because I don't feel like having to stop and get a whole lot more firewood. But I'll bring you all back in the morning when we have a fresh pot of stew. And we are once again heading farther south, because we are still seeing cattails, we are still seeing a lot of temperate trees, and I haven't seen a single hyena yet, so that means we are not anywhere near far enough south, so I wonder now how far we have to go. See you in the morning. The next morning, it's a very high rift activity day, but that's okay, because it is daytime, and I think today is the day we are going to find some jungle. That's how you pronounce the word jungle in Vigit Story language. Jungle. Yep. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Why would I lie to you? I have to admit, I do. Oh, snap. You still coming at me, bro? Yeah, you want to go away. Got him. That was unexpected. That was, what, six or seven actual hits? I'll take it, though. There's a male here that may mean there's a female nearby. And now we're extra slow. We got plate armor and this chest on our backs. Okay, well, I don't see one in the immediate vicinity, so I think we'll switch back to our mobility armor. And just hope that no more black bears decide to pop up. Ooh. More big caves. Hey, hey, hey. Look at this. We have our first papyrus. That is an excellent sign. So we might still see some cattails going farther south, but those should give way to more and more of this stuff. And I see a very unfamiliar tree over there with kind of like bluish leaves so I wonder what this is I have not messed around with the south much since 1.16 and I have not touched anything with the southerly fruit trees so I am not familiar with what this tree oh trees two of them what these trees are they're olive trees oh cool okay Oh, man, do I make room in the inventory for these? And there's more over there. I think I see some... Oh, I spy some jungle. Oh, we have a destination now. We are getting close to where we need to be. I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to mark these trees rather than take them. And we'll make this sort of a lighter lime color. And you will be this... There we go. All right, jungle, here we come. Okay, let's cross here, and I think I spy another new crop. Right over this way. Is this... Yes, we have cassava. All right. So cassava is an interesting crop that we will cover in a later episode. But for now, what we need to know is that it is indeed a crop. And do you know what? I'm actually going to use this now... And I'm going to just set our spawn right here. In case we die, we have a place to come back to and not have to run for about an hour and a half of real life time, because that is just painful. So, hey, we got some seeds. All right. And you just grew before our very eyes. But cassava is interesting because it can be both a vegetable and a grain, depending on how you prepare it. And so it can actually fulfill two different nutrient categories. Let's go check out what appears to be some jungle. 
We still have onions, apparently. And this tree, what is this tree? And what is that lump over there? Are you a pig? Are you a bear? You're pigs. Okay, good. More cassava and orange tree. Okay, we haven't seen one of these yet. Looks like it is still a young tree. So, no fruit. But let's go ahead and we will do orange tree. And let's make you, surprise, surprise, orange. We have two fruit trees and some new leaves over there. So here in the south, you will find these tall ferns. And they... Uh, I thought you could break them and bring them with you, but I guess not. So we will not break them. you also find these fern trees. And these can't be grown or transplanted. But when you chop them down, you'll get firewood out of them, like you were chopping down a fruit tree. At least the stem. So let's go ahead and mark this orange. We'll check out what this tree is over here. A pomegranate tree. Oh, cool. Okay. And we'll make you sort of magenta. We have our first wild rice. So I think I will make room for the rice. Probably, you know, I'm just going to dump the cassava. We don't really need that. Take the seed. Thank you. Now these are kapok leaves. These are kind of the birch tree of the south. They are pretty ubiquitous, and their leaves are used extensively for a lot of the native shrubberies that you find dotted around the landscape. And this is a somewhat threadbare kapok tree. They're usually not quite this leafless. Like, here's a more healthier looking one right here. And kapok has a wood that's kind of somewhat in between oak and birch. It has kind of a, a yellowy color to it. And it's kind of like on the oak side as far as color and saturation, but the birch side as far as lightness goes. And here is one of the other main hallmarks of being in the south. Crotons. These are sort of broadleaf plants. You can buy them in real life too. And they are just colorful shrubberies. Or single stem plants, I guess. And they are often found in jungles in Vintage Story. And these are a really nice decorative tool. But this seems to be sort of like a very sparse patch of jungle here. Not really a jungle. It's just a couple kapok trees. And look at that bark texture. Wow. Let's go a little farther south. And I'm thinking just over that ridge there. Unless there's terrible terrain. And let's see what there is to see just a teensy bit farther south. Hey, more rice. Aha, here we go. Here are some of the other southern flowers you'll see. And this is when you knew you are actually far enough. These are golden poppies. And they were previously called California poppies in earlier versions of the game, but it was changed in, I think, 1.15 or 16. But these are definitely, aside from everything else, how you know that you are in the real, real deep south. And here we go. Here's the other thing I was looking for. Peanuts. Peanuts are another southern crop. And when they are mature, they look kind of like this, sort of yellow and yellow-green. They are a very interesting source of protein, I think. Let's go ahead and get some seeds. Oh, we got some peanuts out of that one, too. Let's grab the peanuts. We'll dump the lax for now. Now, peanuts are a protein. They last just like red meat forever in your inventory. 3.4 years. And their saturation isn't super high. It's a little bit lower than cured red meat, which is lower than a cooked red meat. But as a quick and easy protein, it is a really handy food to have around. And oh, there's more terrapreta. And you can't actually cook this into food, but you can just sort of eat them as a, you know, raw protein. Which is one of the very few raw proteins in the game. Let's go ahead and grab these and just eat them up and take the seeds. But they are nice to have around as an easy, quick source of snacks. So you know what? I might actually go and mark this terrapreta for later retrieval. I'm going to grab those soybeans. Hello, trader. You are an artisan. Adachi? How did you get down here so fast? I've been running for days. What the heck, man? 
Well, on we go through this little bit of birch and redwood. And we are going to probably call the episode on the other side because we are now officially in panda bear territory. Look at that. Look at him. I'm not going to kill him. I don't want to get close enough to make him mad either. But, wow, look at that. A panda bear. Let me take this off my... Look at him. We'll admire you from a distance, pal. And yet more deserts. Oh, look at that. Oh, double look at that. Oh, this is so cool. So once you get far enough south, you'll start seeing these bony cow skulls. Although I have no idea where they come from because there are no cows in the world anywhere. But check out something else I saw over here in the distance. It is this cactus, our very first Sagaro cactus with branches. Cute! And a bunny rib cage. Now, sometimes these cactuses will have fruits on top, and you can harvest them, although you can't replant them and you can't cultivate them, so if you destroy the cactuses, much like in real life, you'll never see them again. <gasps> oh, we have our first acacia leaves. And no seeds, okay. Oh, and we have some termite mounds. Oh, so many cool things to talk about and look at and explore. Okay, so we are somewhere that it is 40 degrees Celsius. And we're seeing some acacia trees, or at least their leaves. We're seeing termite mounds, which are a very interesting change. Wow. These used to be very tiny and not particularly varied. See, it is calm. So I might just bunker down for the night. Probably over here by the water. Just to give us some place we can put our backs up against. Hey, a tiny island, even better. But regardless, we are officially in the deep south. 40 degree summers. Hopefully over 20 degree winters. I think we are right where we need to be. Well, everyone... That is about all we have time for in this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. We have finally made it to the Deep South, and in the next episode, we're going to start exploring in a big circle around here to find the place we're going to call home. I hope you enjoyed our little excursion so far from home, and I hope you're looking forward to finding our home and building it. The exciting part, of course. If you have any AMA questions you want answered in a video like this one, Drop them in a comment with the hashtag 20 questions. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have started a Discord server for talking about all things that happen on this channel. So check it out. The link is in the description. Check it out. Join it. Have fun. Support and social links are in the description. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.